Hello everyone, this is UX Race with Anton Maisev and today we're gonna discuss uh, the ISO 9241 part 110 dialogue principles. So let's start. This standard is extremely useful. It helps to solve many severe usability problems and moreover, it provides priceless recommendations which are called dialogue principles here for analysis, design and evaluation of interactive systems. Uh, let's start with typical usability problems. Uh, the first usability problem is unnecessary steps not required as a part of the task. Imagine that you are going to download some free of charge content, you have just pressed the big download it for free button and now you see the invitation to enter your credit card details. You know, just in case. And in this case uh, this is unnecessary step. Uh, the second problem is misleading information. The good example from the old days, still relevant for some applications. We were spending hours watching the misleading one minute left status on some progress bars. The next problem, insufficient and poor information on the user interface. Just think about the GPS navigator that doesn't show you the arrival time. Uh, the, fourth, the fourth usability problem, unexpected response of the interactive system. And the short example I saw once on the Microsoft site. I tried to log in and the system responded with something like this. You cannot log in, press log out to log in. This was extremely unexpected for me. Insufficient error recovery. This is the easy one. Just imagine the Microsoft Word without undo function. And the last problem for today, navigation limitations during use. And this is not about your GPS, this is about the limitations in a dialog. For instance, you are trying to book an apartment, you are on the payment page and you want to make a step back to change the apartment. But there is no back button. What can you do? Find a different website. Now you see that these problems are extremely typical. You can find many of them in modern applications and websites and they can actually ruin your beautiful product and make you a bankrupt. Hmm. Can we do something with this? Of course we can. To solve these problems we can use seven dialog principles. And before we start to discuss them, well, I'm just thinking out loud, but whenever I see the number seven in a document, I know that a sales manager was involved. Because you know, seven looks cool. Maybe there were just six or maybe even eight principles. And someone decided that seven is good enough. I don't know. But what is left is very, very, very helpful. So let's discuss it. And the first principle is suitability for the task. By the way, this is the most important one. If you fail to follow this, your product will fail. According to the standard, the dialog is suitable for the task if it helps a user to successfully complete the task with minimal efforts. And here I have some hints for you. The typical value should be available by default. Necessary steps and information should be included and unnecessary should be avoided. And if a user uses a paper document for the task, the user interface should be compatible with the document structure. Uh, the second principle – conformity with user expectations. A dialog should correspond to contextual needs of the user and commonly accepted conventions. For instance, the user experience, expertise, skills and so on should be taken into account. The dialog should use the vocabulary which is familiar to the user. A dialog should be consistent. And if for some reason a dialog is going to violate the user expectations, firstly, it should inform the user. But what if you are inventing the future and you just cannot make it conform with anything? Uh, then double check that your product at least self-descriptive and easy to learn. And this thought leads us to the third dialog principle – self-descriptiveness. It should be obvious for the user where they are, why are they there, and what should they do next. For instance, the dialog should provide guidance, status and feedback. The need to consult the manual should be minimized. The user should be informed about the expected input and the input format. Next principle is suitability for learning. A dialog should support and guide the user in learning. Rules and concepts which are useful for learning should be available. Appropriate support should be provided. And remember, different users can have different support needs. Next principle is controllability. The user should be able to initiate and control the direction and pace of the interaction. 
until the goal has been achieved. If the dialogue has been interrupted, the user should be able to determine the point of restart, the user should be able to undo at least the last step, and the user should be able to use any available input or output device where appropriate. Error tolerance. In case of error in input, the user should be able to achieve the intended result with no or minimal corrective actions. The system should help the user to detect and avoid errors. The system should prevent any user actions from causing undefined states or failures. Active support should be provided in case of error. And the last dialog principle is suitability for individualization. And this is actually the nuclear power in the world of user experience design, because it is extremely powerful and could be used for both evil and good. You may think in that way. Okay, we provided our users with ability to change the layout, so we don't have to waste our time on the layout design. Because users know better. And actually they don't. They are not designers and they don't know your product as good as you do. What can you do for individualization? For instance, think of the visually impaired users and, if it is appropriate, allow the user to change the language. Ok, that's all for today. See you next time and remember, life's too short to be an expert, be a fan. See ya!